Good morning. I'm Pastor Jeff Gausted, Interim Pastor of Mount Cross Lutheran. Our scripture reading for this third Monday of Easter is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that's what we are. There's a poem I ran across that set me thinking. It's by one Carol Wimmer, a poem she called, When I Say I Am a Christian. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not shouting I am saved. I'm whispering I get lost. That is why I choose this way. When I say I am a Christian, don't speak of this with pride. I'm confessing that I stumble and need someone to be my guide. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and pray for strength to carry on. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting I have failed and cannot ever pay the debt. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are too visible, but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I'm a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartaches, which is why I seek his name. When I say I am a Christian, I do not wish to judge. I have no authority. I only know I'm loved. You and I live in a very paradoxical time when the polarities of everyday life threaten to rip our every community apart. Conservatives versus liberals, the economically elite versus lesser classes, higher educated versus lesser educated, white versus persons of diverse color, English speakers versus other speakers, Americans versus alien. In far too many ways in a culture around us, it seems people seek to find ways to set themselves apart from anyone and everyone who isn't just like them, who doesn't act like us, think like us, identify exactly with us. They circle the wagons and narrow the boundaries and put up fences to keep people out. And all the while, we far too seldom ask, what does God want? What does our risen Lord ask of us? What does the Lord want to make of us? And all the while in the distance, all but forgotten in the background, Jesus continues to speak our real all-inclusive identity. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that's what we are. Understanding ourselves to be the people of God isn't really the problem for most of us. We can somehow hear and believe our inclusions. The challenge comes in who else might be included as God's children. My wife and I, my wife Deb, and I have three children. 
We love each of them deeply and dearly. We love the partners they have chosen, and their children, our grandchildren they have blessed us with, and their in-laws who have now become members of our extended family. But I remember a time when there was a competition between our children, a competition over who was the most loved and favored child. It's not fair, they'd shouted us in deep hurt. You like Matthew best, or you like Krista best, or you like Melanie best. One sibling was pitted against another, competing for our love. It's not true, of course. A parent's love is for each of their children, loves them for who they are, unique, individual, a blessing from God. Only perception is as good as reality. And if and when we perceive that someone else is more or less favored than us, somehow ahead of us, somehow better than us, then what? Jealousy becomes exclusion. Mistrust becomes segregation. Love becomes something other, something less than God designs. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called the children of God. Only here's what we do. Na, 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 na. God loves me but doesn't love you. Too bad, so sad. Goodbye and good riddance. But is this what God desires, what God intends? I cannot, do not, will not. After decades of discipleship and service and searching the scriptures, after decades of seeking what God desires from me and for me, after so many years of servant leadership in Christ's church among God's beloved people, I've come to understand and believe. I've come to set my life in the framework of God's desire to open God's love and care for all. I think of this image. Think of one of those Middle Eastern tents from the movies. You know, a tent pitched in an oasis, a tent with a big roof and sidewalls making it a well-defined home. But imagine with me those outside walls. Imagine the tent stakes lifted and the tent walls opened and God's hospitality opened and God's extended welcome to each and to all. There's the real gospel where the risen Christ extends his arms in welcome to all. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. My fellow children of God, my sisters and brothers in Christ, Christ is risen. Christ is risen in you, through you. You are gospel. So dare to be who you are, for just so, the world around you will come to experience the love and life of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask it to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you, into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time together. I'm sorry about the phone, but there it is. May your day and all the days of this Easter season be filled with hope, faith, and love. Christ's love. Go with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.